Shalom, friends. I'm Eliyahu Shear from Kesed Ve'emet. You can find my site, www.lovingkindness.co. Welcome to another Shear in Derech Hashem. We're currently on the third section of Derech Hashem, dealing with the soul, divine inspiration, prophecy, and some very spiritual concepts. We're up to paragraph number 10 over here. And we spoke last time about the students who would learn about prophecy. And basically what we came to as a conclusion is that people, it was very important that if one is on the correct path of prophecy, that one has a teacher to direct one. If one goes off on one's own direction and begins to investigate in the, into these worlds of spirituality and one doesn't have a teacher, ultimately one can end off in a very bad place. And now immediately the Ramchal, the author of the Derech Hashem, Rabbi Moshe Chaim lived from 1707 to 1747. And he comes to this next paragraph where he deals with Inyan Nevi'e Hasheker. This is the matter of the prophets who are false prophets. Ve'ulam, however, indeed, Ikar Ha'inyan Hazeh. The whole thing about this, Hu Ma'ashe Katuf Bechelik Alef Perikei. This is already what we wrote about in the first section of Derek Hashem, which we haven't discussed yet because we're learning out of order at the moment, but you can reference it if you want to. This comes about from these forces of impurity. We're referring to the prophets who are false. And how do they become false prophets? What happens is they are able to lock into the forces of impurity which are found in the world. In this world, there are forces of good and there are forces of bad, of impurity. And these false prophets lock in to these forces of impurity, which ultimately guide them along paths which are not correct. And they begin to behave in whatever way is embedded within their nature. And that's how they get their particular and that's how they get their particular prophecy. They, uh, they link up with these negative forces, these false forces. And now they have within their potential, that they're going to make a person make an error. These evil forces, these negative forces, begin to send out these influences, in ways, as if they are ways of prophecy. We can all be aware of this. There are many people in the world today who consider themselves to be prophets. And I'm referring, of course, not to real prophecy. I'm referring to certain, certain fortune tellers and so on and so forth, who will come along and tell us our fortunes and whatever. And are they right? Are they wrong? Well, many of them might well have certain access to some of these forces. But usually, like almost in all cases that we're speaking about for our purposes, the direction that they're getting comes about from these negative evil forces. And as a result of that, when they receive this influence, this is a, a, a way, it comes about through a way that seems to be like a real prophecy. And they become to reveal to this person all sorts of matters, truthful matters, because of him and false matters. And they began to renew for this person. They come to make out as if there are certain matters that are wonderful. As the Pasuk says, as it says there in the chapter of Navi Hasheker, of the false prophet. It says over there in the in the book of Devarim, that a false prophet will arise and he will give for you a sign or a wonder. And the sign or wonder will come true. So the uh, Chumash over there warns us that we must be careful that when we see these things happening, it can happen from people who are not on the side of goods. That's why the Torah is teaching us that these things do happen, that the, this particular prophet, who is not a real prophet, can actually make a prophecy which has in it truth. This thing can happen to a person, even without him willing it. 
And it can happen to him also with his will, which means to say that he puts himself into a particular type of trance and he's able to go into the state whereby prophecy uh, is given over to him. And as a result, he sees the vision. And that means to say, it's possible that this particular event will happen. And then he even didn't put any effort into it. Or he stadel al hafko, or maybe he put in effort for the opposite. Vihigia lo ze, and this this thing comes to him. Mipnei shelo nishlam b'maasav vihstad luso, because the person did not yet perfect his deeds and the required effort that was necessary to do things in the right way. The Ramchal is telling us this is the nature of the false prophets: is that even though he can experience a prophecy. Nevertheless, it can be that the prophecy is true sometimes, and it can also be that the prophecy is false. The problem is, is that he's dealing with forces that can corrupt his way. Once again, if he doesn't, he doesn't have the right teacher and he's not led along, along the right path, he will end up in a situation whereby he will not be able to differentiate between what's good, what's bad, what's right, what's wrong, and he will tell people the particular prophecy that he has. For Ifsha, and it's possible, Sheyagiya, that it will happen, that it will come to this person, for a person who is actually involved in evil, the Hishta del Hasigo, and he put in the effort to acquire the prophecy, in other words, in an evil manner. Vahainu, which means to say, there are certain people who put in the effort in order to start pursuing these particular energies these particular powers for yishtadel hidabek bam and the person desires to cleave to these negative energies he actively desires to cleave to the negative energy biritsoino with his will la sig mayhem mashiach puts to attain from them whatever he desires la sig to whatever he wants to get dahain which means shigalulo in yanim that these things should then reveal certain things to him kamoshe kosuv as it's written, Shebahim, or as we already explained, Shinivair, Shebahim, Yachazikatsmo, that with them he strengthens himself, Nifnebne Adam. If a person is able to do this, he can start to be considered in front of other people, Linavi, as a prophet. So what does he do? It's easy to start to cleave to the negative forces out there. It's far easier to cleave to the negativity than it is to cleave to the positivity. And this false prophet, what he does is he begins to exercise his abilities to cleave to these negative forces so that when he prophesies in a certain way, he will be able to convince people that he really is a prophet. And then he will lead people in a certain way, which is negative. As he desires. Or he will get honor in their eyes. People will start to respect him. Because they'll say, look at this fellow. He knows the future. Or look at this fellow. He tells us that so-and-so is speaking to us from the dead. And let's go afterwards and learn more about what our relatives want from us or are, are telling us or a certain person or what's the message and whatever it is. And these are the false prophets over here, according to what we're learning here in the Rambam, who start to use this as a means to gain honor in, their, in the eyes of other people. They use it as a means to gain power in the, in the eyes of other people. And from these type of people, these were also the prophets of the Baal, the Hashera. These were two different types of groups that were serving various um, negative gods called the Baal and the Hashera. They would occupy themselves with all of this. Until they would cleave to these particular forces. And then they would be able to grasp a little bit of these matters. And through this, they would be able to seduce those people who had faith in them. And so too, they would start to invent all sorts of things through the strength. Nifla ot le ot. The, all sorts of wonders they would perform, according to their prophecy, as we're going to describe in further detail. However, 
these false prophets already knew they knew that what they were dealing with over there were matters of impurity. They knew that where they were getting the information from was from the side of impurity. That that they chose for themselves. And they never even thought for themselves that they were really prophets. But it was from the wickedness of their hearts that they would behave in this way. Ach, however, even for a person that did not put in that effort upon this, this thing could still happen. As is described, and therefore, and therefore, the Ramchal tells us that the people who would really want to put in the effort for prophecy, they needed to put in the effort to get melamed, muvhak, they had to get for themselves a, a teacher, an outstanding teacher, that would teach them the ways of prophecy. as we will describe, the Ali Ador, and through him, that teacher, they would ultimately be saved and they would be put onto the right path and they wouldn't fall into the traps of the false prophets. They wouldn't fall into the traps of getting uh, close to the forces of impurity and making up things and destroying themselves at the same time. The Kolze and all of this, they would do until they got to the level of prophecy in truth. That since they would get to the stage where they would have proper prophecy, Kavara uha efresh hagadol, already they would see the great difference, the ikiru, and they would recognize it, the ef shalahim, and it was impossible for them, or any longer, she yistap kubaze, that they would be in any doubt, klal ukomoshen ispa'er, they wouldn't be in any doubt about the fact that they had achieved real prophecy, which means to say basically that the Ramchal is telling us that in those days, the prophets knew what they were doing one way or the other, and they knew that they were doing it for the sake of the evil in order to get their own honor and to be respected in the eyes of other people. However, these things can still happen today. That's why he's telling us about it. And indeed, there are people that do involve themselves in these type of activities. And he tells us, however, for those who are really interested as they were interested in those days, they need a proper teacher to lead them on the right path. If not, they'll be stuck in a situation where either of their own doing or alternatively just happens that way, that they can engage in negative prophecy and everybody ultimately will lose out. So we've finished that paragraph, paragraph number 10. We'll move on to paragraph number 11 in the next Shi'ur. Thanks for joining me. I'm Eliyahu Shir from Keset Ve'emet, www.lovingkindness.co. If you've enjoyed the Shi'ur, please like my video, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell button to be notified of future Shi'urim. Please feel free to make a positive comment and share this video with your friends and your family. Please do come and see what we're doing on our site, the activities that we're involved in. Become a part of it in some way. We'd be delighted to speak to you and partner in further activities of spreading Yiddishkeit and doing more in the realm of goodness and kindness. And uh, please do be in touch with us. We would love to be in touch with you. If you're going through any difficulties during this time of the coronavirus, also feel free to be in touch with us. Let's find a way to grow together and do more to do good, keep ourselves occupied and with positive thoughts of getting through all of this together and growing and becoming greater through this experience. Thanks so much for joining me and I look forward to another she or with you soon. Please feel free to be in touch and I wish you everything of the best. Shalom, shalom. Bye-bye.